At school, I studied Latin for two years. The most interesting part was learning about Pompeii. I went there whilst interrailing in 1989 and decided it was time to return. The sites expanded significantly from what I remember. This video is the fourth in the five-part mini-series that was filmed in Naples, Vesuvius, Pompeii, Amalfi and Sicily. The Vesuvius ride is linked above. Naples was the start and end of my trip. Although the city is one of the oldest continuously inhabited cities in the world, there was almost nothing remaining from the Roman period. Even going to Rome doesn't give me much insight into Roman life 2,000 years ago. Rome is very much a modern city. On 24th of August, 79 AD, Mount Vesuvius erupted, destroying the ancient Roman cities of Pompeii and Herculaneum. Pompeii was covered in 6 metres or 19 feet of ash. It gives an insight into what life was really like back in those days. Prior to the eruption of Vesuvius, Romans didn't even have a word for volcano. People of Pompeii had no idea what was about to happen, so most did not flee. The ash froze the city in time like a photograph. In 1549, Domenico Fontana dug a water channel and rediscovered Pompeii by accident. It was left alone at the time, however, within a century, royal treasure hunting and piracy swept through the ancient city. Roman baths were like our leisure centres. There were big buildings with swimming pools, changing rooms and toilets. Friends would get together and gossip whilst business may have been discussed. It was time for socialising. Many baths also had snack shops, meeting rooms and gardens. They were heated by a furnace which supplied heat directly under the baths. They also had hot and cold rooms like modern Japanese onsens. Basilica is 1,500 square metres or 16,000 square feet. It was used for business and for the administration of justice. The space is believed to have included an equestrian statue and the walls were richly decorated with stucco-like large blocks of marble. The basilica was constructed between 130 and 120 BC and is one of the oldest examples of this type of building in the entire Roman world.
Comitium was built during the 2nd century BC. It originally constituted the headquarters of the polling station and then became the place intended for the counting of votes and announcement of newly elected judges. Whereas the square of the forum, which was just outside it, became an area of casting votes. The house of geometric shapes from the largest house in the entire city with more than 60 rooms and occupies an area of 3,000 square meters or 32,000 square feet. It is a series of terraces on two levels that exploited the natural slope of the land, offering guests who entered the panorama of the Sarno Valley. It has a rich floor decoration with black and white pattern tiles with complicated shapes and checkerboard designs. Despite its size, it shows a typical layout of a Roman house with a large central room followed by the waiting room. Many of the mosaics in Pompeii have been removed as they can better be preserved inside museums. Mosaics illustrate ancient Roman life including athletic contests, local and exotic wildlife and mythological creatures. They are placed on the floor and are meant to be walked on. Mosaics were used to show off the owner's wealth and also his knowledge. Mosaic artisans relied on local stones for the bulk of their work but imported unusual colours for special highlights. When no stone would do, they turned to glass in bright colours like green and blue. The triangular forum, which takes its name from its unique shape, stands on a ridge of lava rock that overlooked the valley in the mouth of the river Sarno. It preserves one of the oldest sacred areas in the city, dating back to the 6th century BC. It was accessed via De Teatri through a hallway with six columns that formed a monumental facade preceded by a public fountain. A double rectangular enclosure before the stairs to the temple has been interpreted as the tomb of the legendary founder of the city, Heracles. Next to the large theatre, there was a large quadrangle surrounded by a foyer, which was an area where the spectators could stop during the intervals of the theatre shows. After the earthquake of 62 AD, the building changed its function and became a barrack for gladiators. This resulted in certain parts of the building being reorganised. The most important rooms were those on the eastern side where the rooms upstairs may have been the apartments of the undertaker of the gladiators.
Church Theatre was built by exploiting the natural slope of the hill for the construction of the auditorium. It was built around the middle of the 2nd century BC and significantly restored according to Roman style. Roman theatre included various forms of entertainment that the Roman citizens found interesting. It included dance, music and reenactments of various stories. Plays were performed for entertainment, to spread news and propaganda and to honour the gods. Most Pompeii residents would have understood Latin and so the language wouldn't have had been a barrier. However, in more remote parts of the empire, puppetry was more popular because it overcame the language barrier. Works from famous Roman playwrights, including Platus and Terence, were a considerable influence, even transcending the theatre to improve education and literacy in Roman life. <laughs> Immediately upon entering the house, there was a bath that would be filled with rainwater, which is made of fragments of Roman double-handed jar, a common technique used in Greece. The back wall in the small garden is decorated with wild animals, a highly successful theme in the decoration of open areas. The side walls depict Egyptian-style landscapes with animals of the Nile Delta. This probably indicated a link between the owner of the house and the cult of Isis, widespread in Pompeii in the last years of the city. The house is typical of a high-ranking family. The central hall has paintings with scenes from the Iliad and the Odyssey, which were heroic stories of the day. The house is a small thermal area below which there is a basement, perhaps a cellar, where a box was found with 118 pieces of silverware, now in a Naples museum. The crockery included shapes to serve wine, but mostly plates and cups used at banquets. The south side has a reconstructed wagon. The house belonged to Quintus Popeus Sabinus, who was a relative of Nero's second wife. Over 1,000 victims have been excavated in Pompeii. During the first phase of the eruption, those who hadn't left the city in time were trapped in their homes or shelters, buried by a shower of pumice stones or killed by the roofs and walls collapsing under the weight of volcanic debris. It reached about three metres in height at this point. Of these victims, only the bones have been found. Afterwards, a high-temperature pyroclastic flow hit the city at high speed and filled all the spots not yet engulfed by other volcanic materials, so that any bodies still in the city died at once of thermal shock. The bodies of these victims remained in the same position as when the pyroclastic flow hit them and being covered by calcified layers of ash, the form of their bodies was preserved even after the biological material decomposed. Hundreds of casts have been made of these bodies. More recently, the casts have now been laser scanned and reprinted in 3D in museums around the world.
Despite modern pedestrian crossings created to keep pedestrians safe from traffic, in Pompeii the stepping stones are implemented to keep pedestrians' feet dry from rainwater and clean from filth, debris and animal waste that accumulated in the streets. There were 20 times more stone crossings than in any other Roman cities. This indicates both the quality and the quantity of the water flowing through the city. There's evidence that some of the narrow streets were one way. Pompeii had terrible road quality problems because most were paved with silex, a type of cooled lava stone that wore away relatively quickly, leaving ruts from wagon wheels and so potholes are a much older problem than most people think. As an interesting aside, train lines in many countries are 1,435mm or 4 foot 8.5 inches wide. Legend has it that this is the same width as two Roman horses' bums, and that the chariots were the same width as the bums. This is a beautiful story, but unfortunately only a story. I've left a link below that debunks this story. around 70 BC it was one of the earliest Roman amphitheatres built of stone previously they were built of wood it could hold up to 20,000 spectators the building is located in a peripheral area so as to facilitate the movement of so many people the arena is separated from the area intended for the spectators by a parapet which is decorated with frescoes of gladiators preservation of Pompeii and its amphitheatres has given insight into the gladiatorial culture of the Roman Empire. Painted posters on the walls of the amphitheatre have been uncovered depicting gladiators accompanied by slogans and nicknames. They evoke shades of modern posters and banners depicting today's sports stars and celebrities. For example, one poster declares a gladiator to be the heartthrob of the girls. One of the most notable events in the amphitheatre's history occurred in AD 59. Deadly brawl occurred between Pompeians and residents of Nuceria during games in the amphitheatre. This resulted in a 10-year ban for the, for the amphitheatre. However, this measure was withdrawn in 62 AD after a disastrous earthquake struck the city. Filmmaker Adrian Maben lost his passport during a visit to Pompeii, so he went back to the amphitheatre which he had visited early in the day in order to find it. Walking around the deserted ruins, he thought the silence and natural ambient sounds present would make a good backdrop for the music. He also felt that filming the band without an audience would be a good reaction to earlier films such as Woodstock and Gimme Shelter, where the films paid equal attention to performers and spectators. The amphitheatre was closed for six days in October 1971 for the filming. Unfortunately, all of Pink Floyd's music is copywritten, however, I've left a link below to the concert they held in Pompeii.
Mi dispiace che il video sia così lungo, ma Pompeii è fantastica. I've done a lot of talking, would love to hear from you about great concerts you have been to. And also, I'd love to hear if any of you have been to Pompeii. If you've enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and to ensure you receive more videos, please hit the subscribe and bell button. Next week will be the Sicilian leg of this bikepacking trip. Hope to see you there.